All right. Um, so I know we got some posters due today. Some people have sent them over. Thank you. Um, I know some others haven't yet, and that's okay. Just get those to me. What we'll do is Thursday, we'll spend some time um, going over them. Those that I have at that point, we'll just give you a little quick critique. I'm sorry, somebody cut somebody off. What was that? Um, somebody has to leave class already. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. Um, and like I said, we're recording this, so we'll we'll get this up online for you. I know I did I put up. Let me just double check my. Um, I want to just check the YouTube. I know I, I thought I uploaded, but I'm not positive. Let me double check. I don't think I put it onto the website yet, but I think it's on the oh, come on computer. Yeah, so I got up, I had the last two classes up online. I just don't think I put it into the um, website yet. So I'll get that up there along with today's class. So if you, you're leaving early or such, no worry. Um, how to first term, yeah, no rush. Um, to first 200% great. Yeah, everybody's gonna get 200%. No, everybody's doing great, guys. Look, I, I've got most of it done. I'm just still trying to get it up get distracted easily um i have a nine-year-old she, she's like she's crazy i get nothing done once she comes home I swear to god i pick her pick her up about three and nothing gets done after that and then by the time she goes to bed at 8 39 i'm just exhausted and all i want is a, a, a little drink or just to kind of veg out but we're getting into there but everybody's doing really, really good. Okay, so don't move sweat. Nobody is, has any issues at this point. But we will get that up. I'm, I'm hoping. I know I got to get that, get that off my back. I know you guys. Professor. Are yes. I had to send my through uh, we transfer. Did you get it? I got. Let me just check. I think I. Let me. There's a big file. They say I couldn't do it through my email. I. Boom. I just got an email from you, sir, but it doesn't, there's nothing attached to it. And then the, I did it again with WeTransfer. And it's this, yeah, I got a, two of them. Neither one has an attachment. This should be a third one called. Um, do this, save, save it as a PDF. PDF? Yeah, do it as a PDF, smallest file size when the option comes up. Okay, I'll show you actually okay. real quick. I'll show everybody. So here's a file, as soon as this is your poster, it's awesome, beautiful, best thing ever. Um, you can do save as, and then click here to be PDF. Okay. And then it's, you'll name it with your name, hit save. And then when these options come up, you're going to get these options here, go to smallest file size. Okay. And then hit save. Cause what that's doing, it's going to take away the, oh, I'm not sharing my screen in my, hold on. I'm low talking, not sharing. Hold on, let me share. <clears throat> You'll see this really quick. So um, you've got a beautiful file. It's awesome. Eh, best thing ever. Go to uh, save as. Drop down to format as PDF. Hit save. And when this image, when this window comes up, click on this up here where it says default and go to smallest file size. And what that does is it turns off this editing capability and it makes it a PDF and it'll be like really, really small. You'll be able to send it, you could send it anywhere you want, okay? So make it a PDF, smallest file size, that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, cause I know sometimes the files get big. So if they're getting big, just go to that and we're good. If I need anything um, additional or have any problem, I'll contact you and let you know. Okay, I'll be like, hey, I can't see this as blurry or something like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So let me get set up over here. Oh. Okay. And all right. 
right. Any other questions before we start? We're going to get into InDesign. So hopefully you downloaded it. <clears throat> um, it's the ID, kind of a pinkish color. I'm going to get mine started here. I'm going to just kind of go through the basic um, interface, kind of what it is, what it does, when we're going to use it. We'll start with all that stuff. Um, we'll be a couple days of just kind of going through it. Um, and then I might give you a small mini assignment and then we're going to actually kind of move into the final project. We're, we're not that far away. We're probably about a month out-ish. Let me see, when we're we supposed to end class. I'm looking at, looks like May 20. Does that sound right, guys? Is the last class. So I'm looking at Thursday, May 20th, should be our last class. So we're almost about a month out, a little bit out. So we'll, we'll, yeah, be, almost. we'll, be, we'll be fine. And um, like I said, we'll, we'll go through InDesign for a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> let you guys bring it all together and get this loaded. What's going on? There we go. So as this thing's starting to load, <clears throat> um, InDesign was a Dolby's um, answer to a program that used to be called Quark, the Quark Express, um, and also PageMaker, if you've heard of that. So those were kind of the two big um, desktop publishing programs. Um, Quark was huge. Um, Again, we're talking in the in the '90s, early two thousands. Um, and if you were a graphic designer, you had to learn that it was a whole separate company that was was grinding it. Um, <clears throat> it was different than Photoshop and Illustrator, so it was a whole separate com separate company that was doing it. So, you, not a, in addition to having your Photoshop, um, Illustrator, Adobe product, you had to have Quark. Um, Adobe came up with their version, uh, what was called InDesign here. And um, I, ultimately, I think their goal was to put Quark out of business, and, and they did. Um, so um, when InDesign first came out, there was always this controversy. Do I, want to, do I need to know InDesign? Do I need to teach InDesign? Um, all of that was happening. Um, now it seems funny because um, everybody's using InDesign. Obviously, and, and part of it is because you, you pay for the Adobe products and it comes with it. So why would you buy something else um, that you don't have to? So um, so InDesign came about, now it's become the, the industry standard. Um, what is InDesign? InDesign is a, a desktop publishing program. Um, it's designed to bring together um, image and text um, to allow you to lay those out, um, to be able to then export those as files to be printed um, or go on to some websites or to make a PDF or to make a form. Um, <clears throat> those are all things that, that um, InDesign is set for. So um, if you, you read a newspaper, you read a magazine, um, uh, you, you read a book, um, whether it be a novel or a textbook. Um, it was probably, I am probably 99.9% .9 sure um, it was done with InDesign. Okay, so it really is that kind of bringing everything together kind of program. So we're going to do our images and kind of Photoshop and or Illustrator or combination, depending on what we're trying to create. Um, we're going to get our text again. We're, we're not wordsmith, but we're going to get our text from um, our clients um, that may come in the form of Microsoft Word or some other kind of, of document. And then we're going to bring those together. So we're going to take our words 
bring me onto a page with our, our images. Um, we're gonna add the headlines and all that kind of good stuff and pull together to make a document that looks good, that's pretty, um, that can be um, produced and disseminate it to, you know, potentially thousands or millions of people, depending on, on what, what it is and where it's going. So <clears throat> um, InDesign is a very valuable tool. Um, like I said, I use it now just for basic stuff. Um, you know, even just kind of writing a letter, I tend to go into InDesign just because I like it. It allows you to do the formatting um, pretty easily. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that are similar to Photoshop and Illustrator, which we're already using. Um, so for me, that's kind of a good thing. Uh, Microsoft Word to me is a bit clunky. And I know people that use it all the time and they're probably very proficient with it, but um, you know, I know InDesign, so why do I need to do Word? And um, InDesign will do a heck of a lot more than Microsoft Word will. So, um, you know, I just kind of use InDesign for pretty much everything. And, and, and you can, you could use this for writing a, a, a paper um, just as easily as you could utilize Microsoft Word. So um, <clears throat> let's kind of just go through that. I'm gonna just kind of create a new document and um, take you through some of the quick interface with it. So again, we're getting these very similar pop-up windows like we're used to seeing. Um, by default here, I'm running into eight and a half by 11. Again, that's our normal page size, paper size here in the US. Um, but if you're used to other, other uh, millimeters, centimeters, pica, something, whatever, you can do that too. So if I was designing something, maybe I want to go on the website, um, I might mo move it into points instead of inches type of thing. Um, but I'm gonna keep it at inches. Um, I'm going to, I'm allowed to say how many pages. So it, by default here, this one's coming up one, but I'm gonna say it's uh, 12 pages. Again, um, I don't need to know exactly in the beginning. I can take pages out, I can add pages in, uh, but it's always kind of good to do that. Um, I can click here facing pages, which means it's gonna give me the right and left side, right? As we look, so when we open up a book or a magazine, um, we get the, right and left, so here is a magazine in the aquarium. And then here is a, a spread, right, the, the right and left sides. Okay, and, and this is probably about, it's probably close to eight and a half by 11, and maybe a little bit off one way or another, but it's a magazine and I, I guarantee you, they laid this thing out using InDesign, you know, and there's pictures and there's illustrations and color bars. You know, so it's combination, it's bringing things together and bringing these elements together here in InDesign to do this, okay? Um, and some of it might be completely done with um, Photoshop. So I'm gonna say like this cover, all of this was probably done in Photoshop. They did the titling here in InDesign. Um, also the, the words here at the bottom are done in InDesign. Okay, so it's kind of one of those programs where we're bringing things together. So I'm gonna say 12 pages front and back or, or facing pages. Um, if you want a text frame, you can do that. I'm gonna leave that off just so we can see what that is. Um, and then we're gonna have columns. Let me just turn my preview on and that's gonna show you what that's gonna do. So over here are columns, right? So it's giving me a preview of columns. If I wanna to go to three, you can see it does that. If I wanna to go to four, Again, these are just kind of guides for me as I start to design as to where my text and how things are gonna go. Um, so I'm gonna just leave it at four. And then we have our margins, right? We have top, bottom, right, top, bottom, inside, outside. And it calls inside, outside because there is really no right and left. If I turn off the facing pages, um, it turns into right or left here, okay? So, um, when I put on facing pages, it turns it into inside and outside. So inside is um, along the inner here, and then you have the outside there. And right now it's preset to a half inch. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that just for the sake of, of leaving it. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of hit, just hit create, and it brought up a document. So it looks like it's only one page, but I'm gonna zoom out the same, same keystrokes, right? Command minus or command plus, zooms in, zooms out. 
so a lot of the things you've already learned throughout the semester using um, Photoshop and Illustrator are in play here. Let's get this a little bit fit in here. Um, so you can zoom in, zoom out, and these are all different pages. Okay. And if I want to, let me pull up my, let me get my pages going here. So I'm using my tabs here, I have properties, I have pages, and I have libraries. I really don't have anything in my library at this point. Um, so the pages are here, 1 to 12, and you can see those there. If I want to skip to page 12, I can click on 12, and it will take me down to 12. Um, so if I'm zoomed in, I'm on page 12, and I want to go to page 1, I can double click on 1, and it takes me to 1 or anywhere in between. So whenever I click over here on pages, it will take me to that particular page. Okay. Properties are basically whatever element you have at that point. So right now, it, this is just kind of saying the page is eight and a half by 11. Um, but if I put an element in, it will start to give me the properties for that. Um, alignment, so we can align things. And these are, look the same as we have in Illustrator along with some, some pathfinding tools. Um, we can put in links, links to other articles or links to, um, in this case, links to, to images, it would be. We can have layers, okay? Um, and Illustrator, I mean, an InDesign really doesn't matter a whole lot normally. Again, it depends on what you're doing. Um, we've got paragraph styles and character styles, and we'll get into those. We've got text wrap meaning how the text interacts with an image. Uh, and then we have a, a color swatches. Um, it kind of defaults to these only CMYK plus a, um, a green um, and a blue down here and a red. You can add colors, okay? So we can go to a library and add a new color group and add those kind of items in. Um, but we'll get into color also as we go. But these are kind of defaults here. Um, likewise, over here on the left, we see the color panels, right? We have the um, fill and we have the stroke, just like we had in Illustrator. Um, and then we have the select tool, the direct select tool. So again, these are still the same. Um, this is a page tool. It's kind of moving pages around. We're not worried about that. This is called a gap tool, which is going to make a gap between two objects. We'll get into that. Um, this is a content collector tool, bringing things together. Um, it's, it just popped up and there's nothing here. So um, we've got our type tool and we have type on a path. We've got some align tool. We've got a, a basic pen tool. So again, you start to look and go, whoa, I know the pen tool. I just learned that in Illustrator. Same, right? And then we've got Triangles, rectangles. Okay, we've got boxes, we've got gradients. So you're starting to go, wow, this is kind of very similar, and it is. Um, so what I want you to know is a lot of what you've already learned, a lot of what we're already doing um, will come into play here um, because they're designed to all kind of work together. Does that make sense? So it's designed to um, easily accept uh, Photoshop uh, files um illustrator files etc um so um but there are proper or better practices for ways that we can um, bring in images so we don't bring them in with so many layers like a photoshop file and um all of that so um we'll get through that we'll go through all of these as we kind of go so, but let me just kind of do a very very quick um layout so i'm going to bring in a picture first now with um, InDesign, I can either bring in a picture or I can make a box where I want a picture. Um, and typically what you'll see is like a rectangle. So I, let's say I want to put a photo up here in this area. And again, I'm using these guides as literally what they are, guides. So I've got um, a box and what I want to do is put a photo into that. So I'm going to go to um, File and Place to put a picture in. And it's going to take me off into my computer. And um, let me just kind of pick out a picture here. Let me see if I have anything kind of vertical-ish.
All right, so here's a vertical form. So I just dropped that picture in. Um, and you'll notice that I didn't give me the whole picture because this is where we start to get into some of the, the cool things about um, InDesign. So I have said I want my photo to fit into this rectangle that I created. Now, if I click on um, the object, and I'm, again, I'm using my direct select tool, you'll see I get a yellow box around it. This yellow box is showing me where this photo really is and how big it is fitting into this um, object. If I click it with the blue, that is the, uh, the selection tool, I'm selecting the whole box and I can move that around. So if I wanna move this box, I hit the, the, the black arrow, the selection tool, and I can move it around to where I want to place it. If I hit the, with the um, direct select tool, now I'm able to actually move the picture around in that box. Does that make sense? So um, I'm able to kind of move it. I'm able to transform it. And again, I'm just kind of pulling it. If I'm using the um, shift tool to do that, it's gonna keep things proportional, but I can also kind of stretch, right? So if I just kind of click on the, the box, I'm actually making the picture bigger or smaller, stretching it um, as B, okay? So I'm able to kind of put that picture into place within the box. So think of, of this blue, as the picture frame, all right? So let me gonna step back a couple, so I wanna show you how this all works. So we've got the, the frame and I'm gonna give it a color just so you can see it. I'm gonna give it a black, okay? And I'm gonna give it the, oops, I didn't wanna do the fill, I wanna do the, the stroke and I'm gonna give it a big frame so you can see it there. We'll, we'll go magenta, oops. Okay, so you can see that obviously. So think of what we drew initially as the picture frame, and then we're gonna put the picture in. Whether the frame has any kind of um, line or color is up to you. In this case, I gave it a color and I gave it a stroke, um, in this case of 10 point, okay? Um, and you can see there are again, various options as to the color, or I'm sure to say that the, the line and the quality of the line that you're gonna utilize. So it doesn't just have, need to be a solid line. It could be dotted, it could be a variety of things um, that you're doing, okay? So much like we had these options with um, Illustrator, we have those here. Um, likewise, we can do the corners, right? We can do some fancy corners, we can do straight, we can do a bevel. Um, round it. So we have, again, options that are available. Um, and then something like the round, it does not need to be that way. We can make it bigger or smaller also. Okay, so we can round out that whole item to get that kind of look and feel that we want. So our, our picture frame does not need to be just kind of a square uh, frame. It can be rounded, it can be decorative. Um, as the frame can be decorative and so forth, okay? Um, as you can see, there's a stroke and a fill. So I can just have a color box if I wanted to. Um, I can give it a fill or a stroke. We'll give it a stroke of, of yellow, a couple points, and we'll give it a fill uh, of blue, okay? So I don't need to put a image in it. I could just have a color box if I wanted to um, for whatever reason, okay? And I can also, again, I could put another box of text within the, this box itself. So <clears throat> think of um, InDesign as kind of like this, um, it's kind of like this Lego. We're bringing all these different parts together and in the end, we're gonna create this, this incredible, I don't know, Maltese Falcon out of Legos. All right, questions so far? Just kind of went over what a, what a photo box is, an image box. So, um, so I had this image box, but as I clicked on it, I saw that my photo is larger than um, my frame. So I wanna get my picture 
within my frame. And that comes down here to frame fitting. Okay, so while this is all selected, I have options. <laughs> uh, fill frame proportionally, fill content proportionally or fit content proportionally. So what that's gonna do is adjust the picture to fit the frame. This one is going to adjust the fill, the frame, adjust the fill so it fits within the frame. Fit contents to frame, we're just gonna shrink it wherever it needs to go to. Um, fit frame to the content. So what this is gonna do is make the frame bigger to fit the picture. Uh, this is gonna center. And this is the content to wear fit, meaning it's gonna kind of the computer is gonna do what it thinks it needs to do to make it fit. Um, the other thing you see here is it says auto fit. So that's a kind of a good one to fit sometimes as you're, especially with your learning and working this, um, it will adjust things proportionally as you resize. So if I make this frame bigger, it will automatically adjust the picture to make it fit so. Um, and then these are just some options for cropping amounts for auto fit. Um, so basically the auto fit fills it proportionally and that's what we typically want that to do. Okay, so um, I'm gonna turn this on auto fit just so we can see that. And then I can fit contents to frame. Okay, so that's gonna again, stretch it maybe a little bit. In this case, I'm pretty close to being right already and I can see proportionally I'm pretty good. So I don't think it's gonna be that much of an issue. Um, again, this will fit the contents. This will fit the frame. So I'm gonna just start and just go through each one so you can kind of see. So in this case, it shrunk it down to fit, but you see there's a little bit of, <coughs> of, of edge over. So meaning I'm cutting off the picture over here. You can see by that yellow line. If I go this, it put the whole picture in, uh, but you can see it did not adjust the frame. So I've got these gap above and below. So in this case, I would probably adjust the frame to fit the picture if that's what I wanted. Um, this is going to fit the contents to fit the frame. So it's going to maybe squish it a little bit. And again, with this image, because it was pretty close already, um, it's not a huge amount of difference. I'm going to here, it's going to, again, it made the frame now bigger to meet the picture. Okay, so depending on how big your photo was or your image was, it will make that frame there. Again, these are all the options that you have. Um, and then center is really not gonna do a whole lot. It's gonna just kind of center it, but I still got the, the gaps on the outside and, and the content of where it's not really a big deal at this point. So I'm going to just kind of fit put contents proportionally. I'm sorry. I wanna fit the contents to a frame proportionally. So it kind of shrunk it in. It did not twist or distort it. It just kind of made it fit within there. Um, there is a little bit of a cutoff, but I'm okay with that. Um, and I want to come back and I want to kind of, I'm going to get rid of this frame. So you don't need the stroke. I'm going to put the stroke to zero. And we can kind of see we have this image fitting in within that space that we wanted. So I'm going to go here to this small picture. And I'm going to go um, Command D, which is, I'm sorry. Command D, which is place. And I'm gonna put in a, a, a larger photo. Now you can see it will take um, PSDs, but it's a 190 meg file. So I don't wanna bring in a 190 meg file to this. I can go back to a, in this case, an 18 meg file. Um, this was an unprocessed one. So we're gonna go with this smaller 18 meg file and I'm going to put it in. So you can see it put it in place, but look, it's like it's so big You can't even see the ends of it. So here is the, let me zoom back out. You can see the picture goes all the way up and extends off the page here. This is the picture. It's so big, it's really bigger than the page itself. So um, obviously I need to do some, some fixing there. Now I could bring in a smaller image or I could fit the frame. So I'm gonna hit the fill contents to frame, meaning I want the picture to be shrunk down to fit within that frame. And there it is. So that's a picture shrunk down by the computer fitting in that frame um, here on this 
this project. And I'm going to give it the um, stroke again. I'm going to give this kind of zero it out so you can see it. Um, in this case, there is a fill, but you can't see the fill because the fill is behind um, the picture. If I took the picture away, um, you would be able to see that fill. Um, with this, what I should do is I'm going to turn on the auto fitting. Let's see if it's going to default to that. It is. So I'm just dragging the picture bigger, and you can see it will auto fill my box. So you can see it stretching it, which is probably not good because it was a horizontal picture. Um, likewise, if I go out, you can see it's stretching it wide. Okay, so ideally, you're going to want to kind of grab by the corner and hold the shift key as you move. And that's gonna give you more of a proportional sizing. Okay, so um, <clears throat> again, we have a lot of play here and a lot of freedom. Watch your images that you don't stretch too much. Um, again, there a little bit you can't really tell, but a lot you can. So even here, I'm gonna pull this out a little bit and it's not too, too bad. Um, but if I keep stretching like this, you can see now we're getting really getting that long stretch and it starts to look unnatural. Um, and what really starts to look unnatural is here we have a person in the picture. Though they're small, it's still enough that our eyes are trained after looking at thousands of people in our lives um, to see whether things feel right or not proportionally. Okay, so um, when you take your picture and you do your fitting, I oftentimes do the auto fit. That way, if I'm working it around, it will do it. If it, for some reason I don't like how it's doing it, I can turn that auto fit off um, and I can resize that picture or that image um, within uh, my, my file. Now, I'm going over to links just to give you an idea and show you now it's showing I have pictures linked. So InDesign doesn't embed the image. Okay, so if we're working with Photoshop um, or usually Illustrator, we can embed, but oftentimes we don't necessarily embed. So we, we've done that with InDesign. I'm sorry, we've done it with Illustrator and Photoshop both where we have it kind of linked. Okay, so if we have it linked, um, you gotta keep the files together. So right now I've got these two images with it um, and they're coming from one folder. If I move that folder or I move this file, it's gonna get confused. Um, it's gonna be looking for those links. So um, InDesign is designed that you can keep everything together. So I'm gonna just go through saving because this is pretty important as you start to work on a project. We can do our normal saves, okay? Um, test ID. We call it InDesign. I'm going to put it on my, my desktop uh, and just hit save. And it's saved it as an InDesign document. Okay. Um, so I can come back and open it up tomorrow. And as long as I don't move anything around, it will be fine. But let's say I want to share it with you or someone else, or I'm changing folders, or I'm working off another hard drive. Um, this is where. I want to do what we call package. Okay, so what package does, it brings together all the images, um, any typefaces we've used, um, and puts it all together with an InDesign document to um, allow you to open it back up later or transmit or send it to somebody else. So I'm gonna hit package and I'll show you what it does with that. Um, it, there's a summary. It tells you what fonts are using at this point. We're not using any. It shows you the pictures, um, color processing, printing setups. Okay, so I'm gonna hit package. And again, it's gonna go in the test and design folder. Um, and we're saying copy everything. Okay, so it even gives me a PDF. In this case, it's the smallest file size because it's kind of a quick one. And the IDML, that's kind of for um, uh, the markup language for a website. So I'm gonna hit just package. And what it's doing is bringing the pictures together. So it's taking them for whatever folders they were in and putting them into the new folder. So if I go over here to file, open, and go to my desktop, 
and I'm going to find that folder test InDesign. We have the um, IDML, which we don't need at this point, but they have the ID, INDD, that's InDesign document. And then we have the links over here, which are the pictures. Okay, so whenever you save or package, it puts together your, your images and your links. Um, it might not seem that important, but when you're working on a, a larger document, you're gonna get hundreds of pictures. So even something like this magazine, there's one picture. We'll go to the back. There's another picture. There's a logo, that's three. Okay, we'll go to this kind of first inside spread. And there's one on this page, there's one, two, three. Over here is four, five, six. There's the logo, seven, eight. Um, so there's eight more images there. And as we keep going, the next page, one, two, three, four images, 12. And we've got another big one, it's uh, 13. This is probably 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This background is 19. So you can easily see where something, just this small little um, magazine, as we go, it's gonna have probably a hundred images or more in it, okay? Or something close to that. So um, it's important to kind of keep it all together and that's where this packaging comes into play. Okay, so as you're working and putting images in, um, at the end of the day, or if you're done working that day, you wanna package it so you know where all your images are, okay? Because um, it, it can get confusing and as you pull things in and move them around and change them up, um, you're going to lose images and then the computer is going to go where are the, where is that picture so i can print it out properly all right um questions so far nothing is it yes it's safe to say that in design Photoshop and Illustrator are, are sort of similar, but I, I feel like this one's only more about layout. Yeah, exactly. So InDesign is layout. Um, Photoshop is dealing with pixel-based images, photos, okay? And Illustrator is dealing with vector-based images. Um, you know, so there are the, the, we have the vector, you have the, the bitmap, um, and then we have this case, the, the, the layout. So um, when we're doing, you know, we'll say a big project. I mean, if you're doing something like a poster, like you guys are doing, you could probably just do all that in InDesign. I'm sorry, Illustrator. Um, but, you know, oftentimes you'll do the image in, in Photoshop or Illustrator, then you'll bring it into InDesign just to do the text because the, the text tends to print out a little cleaner from InDesign. Um, so it's not uncommon to do that to bring it in. I was at uh, I was at the Rubio's the other day, picking up dinner and they had, I don't know, the lobster burrito, whatever it was, special of the month, big mm -hmm. poster. And, and I, the picture was obviously, it was a really nice picture. And I was looking at the image quality. It was really kind of nice. Um, and then I looked at the text and I could tell the text was probably done in InDesign because it was really, really crisp. Mm -hmm. um, if it's done in Photoshop, sometimes you get a little bit of pixelization. Um, Illustrator, you don't get that pixelization, but because it was such a big photo, I doubt they brought that photo into InDesign Illustrator just to put the text in. They may have, I don't know. Um, but it's really kind of working the combination of things. The main reason you're gonna use InDesign is when you start to get into multiple page documents. Oh, yeah. Okay, so if I have just um, one thing to do, if I just have to say, make the cover of this magazine, I could do this in Photoshop, I could do it in Illustrator or a combination of two. But when I get to do the whole book and the whole magazine, that's when we definitely want to get into InDesign because of the way it de deals with multiple pages. Okay, because you, you don't want, you won't be working one page because everything's related. Um, portfolios too, exactly. Especially if you start to get things multiplying linked together. So let me, let me just show you that how great this thing is. Um, so we've got these here and I'm gonna pull these down. I'm gonna say, cause I'm gonna keep this file as we're working. We're gonna say that's gonna become the cover of our um, document. I'm gonna just pull this over to here to page two and pull this one over here also for that. And this will be the cover. Um, and then we're gonna have some text. 
So um, what I'm going to do is I want some text to kind of start on this column, these two columns. I'm going to do a double Y column, even though I have it two. I just I put these in as a guide so I can do what I want. Over here, I'm thinking about where the title should be. So somewhere in this area will be the title. Okay, and then over here, I'm going to be building text. Okay, so I'm gonna put in a text box here. Um, and I'm gonna go onto the internet just to kind of grab some text real quick. And uh, let me just pop this up. Um, I'm just, I'm just looking for an article, something on the desert. Look, there's a thing called the desert news. Who knew? Um, where the heck's that at? Don't even know where it is. Let me just, and I spelled it wrong. That's kind of crazy too. Let's come over here. And I want to go to Wiki because you get all these hyperlinks within there, which will we'll do that. Um, Desert Botanical Gardens. That's fine. I'm looking for an article. Um, it's taking too long. I'm going to go to LA Time. I'm just going to grab a news article. Okay, so I'm grabbing, the, I'm just gonna, I'm grabbing text off the internet here. Obviously has nothing to do with our picture. Um, I'm trying just to grab the text. I don't wanna grab all the other stuff. So I just got it. It's probably not enough, but we'll do that. So over here, I'm gonna zoom in is where my text is. And I'm just going to drop it in and I just paste it and we see we got that article there. Um, but I'm going to paste again. Okay. And I realized that if my article is longer, it won't fit. Okay. I need to go to my next page. So in this case, I'm going to build another text box over here. Um, and I'm going to build another one over here. Again, I'm just putting them in because I know this is where I'm going to be and I can adjust these. Um, and I know there's more text because in InDesign, it gives me this tiny little red cross in a box. And what that's saying is there's more, there's more text. So you need to do something about it. You don't have it all in there. So if I click on that, I can, load it up and you see there's a little kind of a preview there's something going on there and i know i have my text box over here and i can drop it okay so what it did was it's text going from here to here now i'm going to put in some more text so you can just see this all happening and i'm going to make it go to another text so i'm clicking in here and i got to preload it and it's coming over here now if i make a change all the way back here in this first column you'll see it shift over here on the third column. So if I'm just putting in spaces, whoops, let me pull that back here. Over here, I'm hitting returns. I'm just giving spaces in. And you can see it's getting, getting longer. So if I was to put a photo in, <coughs> it's gonna push the text up or down based upon what I'm doing. Likewise, if I take away this gap, it's gonna move that around. So that's kind of really the cool thing about InDesign. It's designed to kind of work with text and be dynamic. So if I'm working on text, a longer article, I can just kind of work and it will push or pull the text from the area that I'm using based upon what I'm doing. So if I take this picture, for example, I'm just gonna copy it, Command C, and I'm gonna put Command V. 
and I bring it over. It will be here, but it's covering up the text. But over here, we've got this thing called the text wrap, which will move text up or down or around it. So right now the bounding box is really the frame. Okay, they, it should be say wrap around the frame, but they call it the bounding box. Um, this one will wrap around an object. Okay, and this will just kind of give it a, a bigger gap above or below or in between. Okay, so in this case, um, because the picture is taking up the whole column, if I do this, it just moved it around. If I did this, it's going to do the same thing because again, we're taking up that whole column of text. And likewise here, it's pushing all the text above, nothing below. So it pushed it all the way over to the next column. So it gave us this big gap here. Um, so we're, we're able to kind of make text go around a picture. Um, and we're able to adjust because when I look at what that just did, I don't like the fact as a designer that we have government of the government, the official said this one line hanging out below the picture. That's kind of bad design. Okay. Um, so you don't want to have these, these little hangers um, or, or, or orphans as we call them in a, in a file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the picture down ever so slightly. So it takes this line and puts it above the picture. Okay. And I'm just using my arrows with that picture selected. And you see, as I'm moving, they put it up top. Okay, so now it's above the image. Now I can also manually give it how much distance between things because I don't want, and in InDesign you don't, or design in general, you don't want the picture to be right on the text. So I'm gonna pull it up here. So I can do that before it jumps. So the top of the picture is the bottom of the text. Now that's not good. Um, because you can see it's cutting off the G here. Um, so it's not good. So I'm going to go to preview. Um, and I'm going to go to preview mode here. And you can see I can't see the bottom of that G. So that means that picture is too tight to that text. Everything wants a little breathing room. So I can bring that picture down to do that or I can tell it over here how much gap I want. I can say I want, in this case, 0.625. It's just, you can see this kind of lighter line around it. So that means anything within that is gonna bump around and move. So again, I can still move my picture down and it will eventually here pop that letter back up or the sentence back up. Um, and it gives me a little bit of a gap here between the picture and the image. So. Um, as we start to work, as we start to design, there are going to be things that I'm going to kind of point out that just keep an eye on. And one of those is text being right on top of a picture, right, left, bottom, top. Um, you don't want it really kind of touching. Okay. So likewise, you don't want this column of text to be all the way over here next to the photo. Does that make sense? That's just bad design. Okay. You don't want it that close. You want to have that gap in there. And that's kind of why I have those guides in. So you can kind of see where those are. So I kind of, I don't run into those mistakes. Okay. Um, and the guides will help you to line up items as we go. Let me just say this questions. All right. So we put in a text box. Um, we've added an image box and we've kind of showed you how they can start to interact together um, and how your text can be continuous flow from one column to the next. And this flow, just so you know, doesn't need to be just from one page to another, right, left. It can go from, from up this page up here, three down to four, or it can always go down to page 10 or 12. Okay, so I can build another text box down here and have the text link from here to here, uh, much like you'll see in the newspaper continued on page 25 and you're reading page two. So this will allow you to do that and have that text go from here to there. There really is no other way of doing it besides InDesign. Um, you would never get this figured out with um, Illustrator because one, it's not that great with multi-pages. 
Um, and you just would never be able to do it. It's not dynamic the way this is, okay? So making text flow from one to the other um, doesn't just need to be the page. It could be across pages. It could be down pages, um, way down pages, meaning skipping down. Um, it could even go back up if you, for whatever reason you wanted to do that, okay? Now, I wanna kind of just show you some of the, the ways we look at InDesign. So um, we have the preview mode, which is showing us kind of the guides and everything. Um, could get a little bit cluttered as we start to work. So you might wanna go into a preview mode, which basically turns off everything except what you're selecting. So if I select, you see the lines, if I don't, you don't. If I off kick, you don't see them. If you scroll over, you start to see the lines. But it kind of opens it up as to what it would look like if it was kind of printed without all those guides in your way. Um, Bleed is kind of giving me a little bit of outside area, which if, if we had a picture bleeding, you would see. Um, so let me do that. So the picture bleed is when it goes off the page. Okay, so it's going to show me how much is going off the page. And the same thing with the slug. So we're not really kind of, don't worry about that right now. We'll get into those terms and what they really mean a little bit more. Um, but you can, like I said, view uh, normal with the, your guides and such in, or you're gonna go to preview, okay? And you can also click that from over here on the left. You can see that I can pull those out. So it's a, usually the bottom panel. There's normal and there's preview bleed and slug. So normal preview is what you're gonna go back and forth with most of the time, okay? So that's how you're gonna kind of look at the files as you're going to make sure you're doing things the way you want. Um, but it's, it's important to be able to do that because here I am in preview, or I'm sorry, in normal, and I can see because of my guides, I've got this gap up here um, because of the way things shifted over here. So I have to come back over here and I'm gonna make a, make a little deletion, I'm sorry, that brings that line up because I did not want that little gap at the top of, uh, of that. I want the things that kind of line up here at the top. Okay, because it's moving things. It's, it's number, as I make one change, it makes another change. So you always have to kind of keep looking ahead and um, keep on your toes within design. Um, Likewise, when I click on this here, um, I'm clicking on and I start to see my, um, my properties. I'm gonna double click here. And if I do that, we start to see our typefaces. Okay, so I can pre-select my typefaces before I drop in text. Um, or we can do paragraph character styles. We'll get into that a little bit later. And that's how you can kind of work previews. Um, but I can like double click here and just Kind of keep clicking. You get kind of you click once, you get one letter. Click twice, you get a line. You get three, you get a paragraph, and you click like four times, you get the whole document or that whole article. Um, and I can change the typeface here. Okay, I'm changing the font and kind of it does a little preview as it works. Um, again, if we're into articles, they're going to be less um, less scripty because they're harder to read. You're going to be more of a serif or a sans serif. Um, so you try to keep away from something that's too decorative um, just because it just won't read well. My computer slowed down a lot. Okay. Um, and again, you can adjust your, your size and all that kind of stuff as you go. I'm just picking a typeface. Boom, and it changed. Um, you can change the color of your type, okay? And that's just here for a fill. Okay, if I wanna make it here, it's gonna do, the, whoops, it wasn't selected. Okay, and I'm gonna give it a fill color. And you can see it changed it to the magenta. Um, so you can give your text color, you can change the size, the specs, all that kind of stuff that you would normally do. Um, over here, I did a pick a, a earlier um, text box, and I'm gonna, what I, what I wanna do is I'm gonna put in just a title here. 
So I'm gonna pre-select my typeface before I do it. Um, and I'm just gonna know, I'm gonna go with Nutra, Nutra Grotesque. Okay, and I'm gonna type, I'm gonna say I wanna be large already, so I'm just gonna put it in at 36. And I'm gonna just kind of select here. I'm gonna go put desert views. So again, I've got that here and I can adjust the sizing, okay, um, of my type. I can adjust the, um, the letting. Kind of pull that up. And again, I can come back through and kind of do all those kind of adjustments that I've been working with um, in InDesign um, or, or Photoshop. And you can see down here, I've got my paragraph styles, all that kind of stuff, all these things that we've done, I have them here. And in fact, I have more so. Um, InDesign has is, is got more things than you would have in Illustrator, for example. So if I select this box and I'm gonna select them in here, you can see there's additional paragraphing styles um, for aligning. Um, I can even do stuff like drop caps, um, drop caps plus areas. Uh, it, it does a lot, right? So if I just, just say I want this to be a drop cap, this P, I can go in here and just kind of push. And what I'm telling it is I want it to be four lines deep. And then over here, I could say how many letters, one letter, two letter, three letters, so I can adjust those things out. Okay, um, and then I can make adjustments as to, you know, where do we start? Where does that paragraph start? Okay, so I can do some kind of indentations, right? So I can preset that indentation going on. Um, so I can bring in the whole column, the whole text. I can bring in just the first lines, kind of like the between the paragraphs where the returns were. So I can have a little indentation there. I can basically pull in additional box width. So I'm, I'm adding in space between the columns. See as I go down, it's, it's getting rid of that. So space between paragraphs. Um, adding in preset limits between areas. Okay, so it does a lot. And then again, we have our drop caps again. Okay, um, I'm not sure why underlined there. Oh, hyphenation is on, should be off. Okay, um, and then I can turn on hyphenation or not. I can turn on things like um, justified, meaning it's the same on both columns. Um, I can do full justification where it brings everything in. And out. again, we start to get little gaps and we'll talk about those type of items. Um, and we can do all of these kind of things. You don't have as many on, on the other programs, just so you know. Um, so it, it's really kind of a sweet program to being able to adjust that. And as we start to work, we'll go through mockups and go through some of the parameters of that. Um, but what I'd like you to do with InDesign between now and Thursday is one, get it downloaded if you haven't already. Um, and open it up and make a document and put, put some pictures in and see if you remember how to do that and put some text in and just kind of, we'll, we'll say play. Um, we're gonna get back into it again on Thursday, but I want you to kind of start to get used to it. And we're gonna start to get into all the kind of craziness that it does. Um, and it does a lot, okay? Um, it's a very, it can be a very complex program, but we're gonna go through it in a very basic way so everybody can do it. But this thing is so sophisticated. Um, it can make like a table of contents. Um, you can work that things up, you can do an index. So I, it can calculate and go, okay, find me every time the word um, Joshua Tree gets used or, or President Biden. And it can index all this stuff for you. It does a lot. We can do page numbering. Um, it, it's a pretty awesome program once you start to get into it, okay. Um, and it is the program that's used for almost every book 
magazine, newspaper, publication, um, it's what they're using. Okay, so um, if you're gonna stay in the world of graphics, it's definitely a program you're gonna wanna use. Um, and I like to think it's a program that we all wanna use, whether you stay graphics or you become a fine artist, um, because you can write your stuff up. You can uh, write your letters. You can um, put your sheets together, like your sales sheets um, with that. So I'll show you just one example. Um, let me just do something. Yeah, I was hoping it was pull up what I did recently. Hmm. I was just looking for this one document. I'm not going to spend the time looking for it here. Open recently. Oh, wait a second. Um, postcard. Here we go. So this is a quick postcard I did um, for a trade show. And we have text box here, 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 down here. We've got some little images we pulled in logos. We've got an image here. And again, I built this in Photoshop, um, took the pictures, put them in a fake um, Polaroid frame just to kind of create some continuity. Um, and I brought it all together. Now I could do this on something else. I could have maybe, I could have probably even done it in Illustrator if I had to. Um, but what I like about this is I can come in here and work this up and, and then work up like, you know, the pricing and the images and so forth like that. So um, even if you're not gonna be a quote graphic designer, you're gonna want it because you're gonna want it for something like this to be able to kind of do a sales sheet or some kind of item um, as, a, as an artist and designer. Okay, so um, like I said, it's a really, really great program. Um, and, and as you start to work, even if you're writing up a paper for, I don't know, an economics class, it's really cool. You can bring in the images and the bar charts and the text to put it all together in a very clean, sophisticated way um, that's unlike anything else. And you're using the tools the way you've been using them. Okay, so that makes sense? Questions here? I don't want to kill you guys the first day with InDesign. But okay. it is a cool program. Mm -hmm. It is pretty cool. It is very cool. Cool. Questions? What do you what do you got? Because we gotta have something. Kind of covered a lot there quickly. I have another class that's uh uh the, the digital publishing. We we've gone over uh, the InDesign. Uh -huh. But uh, it's been such a while since we've used it. Uh, I, this is such a great refresher course. It's really awesome to see those little cool. intangible, the little details that you explain. I'm like, oh, I didn't get that last time. Yeah, and, and I, I think you're going to find a lot of things like, oh, I know how to do that. And that's great. Um, but, you know, as, as you do it, you're going to learn new things. You're going to kind of mm -hmm. get some extra, little, like you said, details. Um, and that's kind of my goal, right? I mean, again, we're not going to get into everything. But, um, you know, I want, want to give you enough information to be dangerous. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and again, this program is it's cool. Like I said, it, at first you're like, oh, this is boring. It's just text and pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, though, because really this is what we end up doing half the time anyway. Uh, oh, I see. I see. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. Very, very seldom I might just have a picture. I mean, what do I have? A, what's a, a picture is good for me or showing it to my wife or mm. putting it on Instagram. I mean, the rest of the time, I'm kind of composing these things. I'm bringing, you know, images and text together because that's how we communicate. So very seldom am I just dealing with um, one thing. I'm kind of bringing it mm -hmm. together in Illustrator or, I'm sorry, in InDesign all the time. Um, so, yeah, I think you're going to, hopefully you guys will like it. Um, and, it and think of it as just kind of an add-on. All right, you know some of the, you know Photoshop, you know InDesign or Illustrator, and this is just another way you can be able to use them along with bringing text and stuff together. Because um, I'm sure you're gonna have papers and stuff and other classes and, you know, you're gonna have your, your, your doctoral thesis to write and then you do it here, you know, when you go to write your doctors, doctor statement. I'm joking. Maybe you should only go get a doctor. Yeah, that's not, no reason you can't. 
You could technically just, you know, <laughs> have at it. <laughs> I mean, I'm working on a, um, for the art business class, uh, I'm working on a, a case study for okay. uh, a 30 day project that I finished in March. Yeah, March. Okay. And uh, still working on it. <laughs> It's hard. <laughs> you have to bring a lot of information together in one place. A lot of information, uh, make it kind of succinct, though. And how are you doing it now? Uh, well, I could share screens and show you. Are you, are you using what program are you using? I'm using InDesign for it. Okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, next, yeah, I'm definitely able to look at it and give you some comments on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, again, hopefully you're finding it's it's a it's a cool program to use, um, and there's a lot of options. And again, I don't want to overwhelm you guys all at once, um, but you know, there's a lot of things that are kind of built in um, to this. I mean, including down here numbering and bullet points and footnotes. I mean, it, it is a very very smart program when it comes to that. Um, and then we'll get into the idea of, um, you know, style sheets and character styles. And again, these are just eight ways that are going to make your life so much easier um, down the line. Okay. Um, you can preset things and figure it out. So whether you're on page two or page 200, with a couple clicks, um, you can change the whole style of, of what you're working on. Um, so it's pretty, it's a pretty, tight program when it comes to that. Um, any other questions real quick? Again, I don't want to overwhelm the first day here with this, um, but you can see we can do pictures, we can do text, um, you know, we can play with type, okay, and kind of pull that into play. And, um, you know, again, that's kind of a, a cool thing to do. Um, and then there's everything on top of that. Okay. Other Sounds questions. Good. All right, so I'm going to we'll pause on that for now. Um, get me your posters. I like I said, I've got maybe a quarter of a quarter of them so far. Um, Thursday we'll go over those. So if you turned it in, I got it. It's just that one that I hadn't gotten because it, the attachment wasn't there. And um, open up InDesign, download it. Okay. And just kind of work with it, right? Go find some kind of news article with some text that you can copy and paste um, just to kind of get a feel for it, bring in some photos. Um, and we're gonna to start to work it up. Ultimately, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a magazine. Uh, we'll do a cover and a couple articles and I'll let you guys pick the subject matter for that magazine. Um, and we'll probably have, well, maybe we'll do something really short and sweet, a little exercise. Let me think of something between now and then but um for now just download it and start to open it up figure out where things are it's like oh that's where this is on here i thought it was over there feel free to start looking at the drop downs we didn't really get into it today but we'll get into it um on thursday okay um and there are pop out menus and windows that we haven't gotten to yet but again those will be crucial as we go um there is a, a nice help section and there are some tutorials. Um, there are even some um, 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 templates that they have built in to this. Um, let me just see if I can pull those up. So um, now we're over here. So there's some pre little style guides and proposals. So they're giving there's some pre done. Uh, a book jacket, okay, so again, you take the picture and then you bring it in here and do the text, um, brochure, business card, um, reports, uh, quick brochure, resume, okay, I mean, I don't know about putting the picture on resumes, but, um, you know, there's basic stuff that's already kind of done, you can just kind of download, let me see if it'll download here.
Sometimes my academic version doesn't let me do anything. No, oh, it is downloading. And it says I'm missing my fonts, but I can go to Adobe and get those. Um, I'll activate them. What it's doing is it's going out to the Adobe um, typeface or type fonts, bringing those in, um, and it's going to bring it all up. But again, you can see there's basically here with this, when you see something pink, it's a good example. When you see something that's pink, highlighted pink, it means that the, the font is missing. Okay, so in, in InDesign, where it's highlighted pink, it means the font is missing at this point. It's being slow. Anyway, I will, I'm going to stop that. Um, but you know, there's preset things done, and you can come back and you can change these things. You don't have to do with what they want. Think, excuse me. Think of these templates as kind of starting points. Um, like if, in this preview, it showed a picture. Um, oh, we'll skip all that. Okay, built those in. I mean, there's things on here I wouldn't put on my resume. Um, but you know, there's things I can you know go through and work with, and I can change up, and I can change the typeface, and I can add things. Um, it's a starting point. Okay, so um, InDesign has those built in. So if you're doing a bigger document, a brochure, or a booklet, um, those are already kind of there. And again, you have a starting point to go from. Okay. Um, normal. Let me go. Um, it looks like there's some layers built in and some lock things. Guides are locked. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll figure it out later. How they, how they built this thing and locked it all up and didn't lock stuff. All right. Um, but there's things that can be done. So you're, again, you're not starting from scratch, which is kind of nice. Um, sometimes it's like, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes because how do I put the text and pictures? I had no idea. I'm confused. So again, we'll look at, you know, you can look at samples. You can, you know, have collections of ways things can go together. Uh, you can download them but they also have these templates to kind of start with and kind of get your mind going. Um, and then you'll come in and modify them and make them your own. All right, let me start to share. All right, questions, guys? I'm good. All right.